Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him out of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph. I like that. And the Lord was with Joseph. Is the Lord with you today? Right. The Lord is with me. Amen. He's with us. He's in our presence this morning. And Joseph was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Keep in mind, Joseph is a slave. And he's identified as a prosperous man. Right. And all Amen. that he does, the Lord made to prosper. Amen. And Joseph found grace in his sight. And he served him. So I guess you could say Joseph was a beneficial, uh, 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 was benefited by the gospel of prosperity. Right. He was blessed. He he prospered. Now not just by um, saying some words or saying he was prosperous. He was a man of character. Amen. This is the key Amen. to to prospering. And he was a man that heard the voice of the Lord. And he obeyed right. the voice of the Lord and kept the commandments of the Lord. And I believe when we're doing this and we are industrious, show initiative, and are independent, work hard, we should prosper. Amen. Now keep in mind, Joseph prospered as a slave. Think if he had lived in a free country like America right, right. and it had his freedom. I mean... A guy like Joseph probably would have been as rich as Job yeah. was of old. Or, or Abraham was a wealthy man in gold, silver, and cattle. So these patriarchs uh, that Brother Dave has been talking about were prosperous men. Amen. God bless them. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Again, the condition. There's always conditions connected with the promise of the Bible. Amen. If you listen and hear the voice of the Lord thy God and keep his commandments right. and are a man of character, you yeah. should prosper, especially in a free country like America, over the long run. <laughs> you should prosper. And Joseph did so as a slave. But Joseph was more than a slave. He was a servant. Right. Slaves, you might say, serve involuntarily. But to be a, a, a servant, you a true servant serves voluntarily. Right. He wants to serve in the best way he can. Jesus was a servant, a suffering servant, and that's how he came. And that's what's unique about the God of the Bible, yeah. is revealed as a suffering servant. That's right. If you read the Quran, there's nowhere where Allah would be described as a suffering servant. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters, according to the flesh. Joseph epitomize this. Potiphar was his master according to the flesh, but Joseph was obedient to him, and he served him. That's right. A lot of you may be employees. You're to serve your employer. You want him to prosper. And as he prospers, if you've got a good employer, and hopefully you do, you'll prosper right. as well. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling. In signalness of your heart, 
as under Christ. This is Ephesians 6, verse 5. And verse 6 is, not with eye service, as men pleasers, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. The heart would symbolize the will. Where your will is submitted to God's will. And you do it out of a heart of love. With good will, doing service as to the Lord and not as to men. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. That's right. Joseph was minded and blessed not as a free man, but as a slave. Because he was obedient to his master, and even more importantly, he was obedient to his God. Amen. 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 I don't know anywhere in the Bible where it says Joseph sinned. That's right. And the Bible goes on to say that uh, Job found grace in the, in, in the sight of Potiphar, and he served him. And Potiphar made him overseer mm -hmm. over his house. All and all that he had put into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house, and all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Jacob, right. for Joseph's sake. Amen. So Potiphar was blessed. Right. Why? For Joseph's sake. And evidently Potiphar treated Joseph as his equal. That's right. Had great confidence in right. this man. He didn't even keep track of his own finances. He had Joseph doing all of this. He trusted him that much. And the blessings of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. Mm -hmm. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he knew not all aught he had. So he didn't even know what he had. <laughs> and so much. He didn't know what he had. But Joseph knew what he had. That's right. And Joseph wanted him to prosper more. Potiphar to prosper more. To do even better. Save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person. And well favored. Or he was handsome. Had a strong physique. Good personality. The type of person you'd want to be around. Joseph. Right. He Amen. had it. Amen. Verse 7. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. And she said, Joseph, lie with me. Come to bed with me. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 25 says, Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Amen. This will keep you from temptation, That's right? especially with the women. Huh? Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Amen. We got to remove our feet from evil. That's something we do. All the time I hear people come forward to pray, often all it calls, Oh Lord, deliver me. And yeah. sometimes it's lust, something yeah. to do with lust. Yeah. Oh Lord, set me free from this. I, uh, you know I've been trying. You know, Jesus said, If your right hand hand, right. Uh, hand offend you, you cut it, cut it off. If your right eye offends you, you pluck it out. Right. Amen. He doesn't say God will do it for you. That's right. Don't expect God to do for you what he's given you the ability to do right. yourself. Amen. Amen. You must do this. That's right. Thank God for giving us the ability to do, to do it. Proverbs 21 and 10 says, The soul of the wicked desire the evil. And Potiphar's wife 
was evil. Mm -hmm. And she desired evil. Matthew 6, verse 22. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Why was Jacob filled with so many light, so much light? Because his eye was single. He was careful of what he looked upon. He was careful of what he listened to. He was careful of where he went. So Potiphar's wife says, Joseph, come lie with me. Come to bed with me. Verse 8. But Joseph refused. Amen. But he refused. He just said, no! Amen. I'm not going to do this! Amen. It's simple. Just say no to sin. That's right. Don't sin, Brother Dave has on his uh, license plate. It's simple. Behold, my master, knoweth not what is with me in the house. And he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I. <laughs> Neither hath he kept back anything from me but before thee. He appreciated his boss. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, you hear so many people. Criticize. They have a job. They're always criticizing their boss. They're always criticizing the one that gave them the job. You ought to be complimenting your boss. <laughs> You ought to be thankful for your boss. Thankful that you have a job. Thankful to your employer. Amen. You're no slave. You know, Joseph just could not have walked away from that job. Right. You can walk away from yours if it's that bad. He was unable to do that, but he still appreciated Potiphar. Neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Right. And not only be sinning against this woman, uh, and sinning against his own body, but he would be sinning against God. Sin is self-destructive behavior. Right. Amen. It's socially destructive behavior. Right. And worst of all, sin grieves and hurts God. It was the sin of mankind that necessitated Jesus becoming a man right. and going to the cross right. to suffer and die on the cross. Sin hurts God. And she came to pass, and it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day. This woman was after him. Right. Uh, right. She was a nag. Day by day, she wasn't going to give up. She was going to wear this man down. Considered him a challenge. And he hearkened not unto her. He did not listen to her. To lie by her. Or to be with her. He right. was careful. We need to be careful of the company we keep That's if right. we're going to overcome Amen. temptation. And she caught him by uh, verse 11. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house <laughs> to do his business. And there was none of the men of the house there within. Now she had probably arranged that. Yep, yep, amen. She probably had planned for that. You know, of course, you know the uh, story of uh, Sister Cindy. You know, I took her out and and uh, to dinner. And of course, she was quite charmed by my company. And then I brought her back uh, to the dorm, parked the car in front of the dorm. And uh, she says, uh, I was going to, of course, conclude the evening in prayer. And, uh, and But while I was praying, she was plotting. Mm -hmm. So this woman, a part of her wife, was always plotting. Yep. Yep. She was plotting to seduce me. But when I did not respond to the seductions, 
uh, convinced her that I was a holy man and took my faith seriously. Verse 12. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled. I like that. Amen. And he fled and got him out. The Bible says in Proverbs 6, verse 26, For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. That's right. Now, how are these feminists, how have they gotten the upper hand in our society? How has this Me Too movement gotten the upper hand? Well, they've turned men into a piece of bread. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. The men of our country, and even the, these uh, young college men, I call them males, they've been effeminized. Yep. Yep. They've been castrated. They've been emasculated by these women. Because all these women have to do is, is threaten to cut them off sexually, and they'll do anything. They'll give up their position. They'll give up their inheritance. They'll give up their privilege. Anything to get the sex. So then they become soft and malleable. Yep. So much so that these Republicans, they would not even interrogate. Right. They were so intimidated, they would not even interrogate the one I call Dr. Psycho, the one the prep. The, the press calls uh, Dr. Ford, Dr. Psycho, as far as I'm yeah. concerned. Amen. They would not question her. We can't have, you know, men uh, questioning a woman. That wouldn't, that wouldn't look good. Well, they discovered that wasn't working. So after a couple of hours, they gave that up. <laughs> Proverbs 22 says, A good name is rather be chosen than great riches. And loving favor, favor rather than silver and gold. A good name. You know, Judge K, in his yeah. defense, yeah. said, You've taken away, you've assassinated my good name. Right. He had his priorities right. He yeah. was concerned about his reputation. Of course, you can rob someone of their reputation. But one thing you cannot rob anybody of, and that's their character. That's right. Amen. They can't steal away your character. They can lie about it. But your character remains good. There are many people of, of a bad reputation who may have good character. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, there are people that have a good reputation bad character. that have bad character. Right. Yep. Second Timothy 2.22 and Joseph understood this principle that uh, Paul so clearly enunciates it in the New Testament. Flee also youthful lust. Yes. Where do you think he got this language? He was familiar with this story. Right. Genesis 39. Right. I'm sure he studied it over and over. Joseph fled. And he must have been thinking about it when he writes this down. I can make this real to it. Flee youthful lust. Amen. Remember, Joseph at this time is probably 18, 19, yep. 20. Yep. A young man. And so successful already. Because he, this young man had self-control. Amen. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, love, peace with them that call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. And then, of course, 1 Corinthians 6, 18. Flee fornication. Yep. Run from it. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Right. Job had a principle yes. that all young men, old men, too, for that matter, need to keep in mind. I've made a covenant with my eyes. That's right. Why then should I look upon a maid? Right. Mm -hmm. Make that covenant with your eyes. First Peter 5, verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, 
walketh about seeking whom he may devour. God had a plan for Joseph. He would one day rule Egypt. But the devil also had a plan. Mm -hmm. And that was to defeat Joseph. And Satan is always working against God's plans. That's right. And Satan is out to get you. Mm -hmm. He knows your weak points. He wants to sift you as wheat. Right. <laughs> 1 Peter 5, verse 9 says, Resist him, resist the devil, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you've suffered for a while, he'll make you perfect. Amen. He'll establish Amen. you, strengthen you, settle you. The God of all grace, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust and live righteously, soberly, and godly in this present world, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us. Why? That he might redeem us, set us free from all iniquity and purify under himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Amen. I like the way Paul talks about grace. He always ties it in with good works. Right. The grace will produce the good works. Amen. Hebrews 4 and verse 15. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet he was without sin. That's why Hebrews 12 says, looking unto Jesus, Amen. the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of God the Father. We need to look upon him. He was tempted in all ways like we are, yet... He was there without sin. And there's no temptation taken us. But such as is common to man. But God is faithful. He won't allow us to be Amen. tempted. Amen. Above that which we're able to withstand. But he will with temptation. Show us the way to escape. And what's the way of the escape? Refuse. Sorry, Just please. say no. Look the other way. Run from it. It's simple. No excuse to sin. That's right. right. James 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, and we will be tried, mm -hmm. <laughs> he shall receive the crown of life, Amen. which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. That's right. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempteth he any man. He won't tempt us with sin, but he will test us. Amen. <laughs> but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Well, very likely, Jacob was enticed by Potiphar's wife. She was a beautiful woman, dressing in modestly. Uh, but being enticed or being tempted is not sin. That's right. That's right. And I think a lot of people misunderstand the holiness doctrine we preach and the doctrines of Christian perfection because they don't understand the difference between temptation and sin. Yep. You may be drawn away. You may be enticed. But you're still under temptation. You haven't sinned. How do we know when we sin? But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. It's the will That's right. that brings the conception. That's right. As you submit your will to it. Suppose, uh, suppose uh, Jacob had, had gotten in bed with this woman. 
And suddenly he hears Potiphar coming home, you know, and gets out of bed, doesn't actually do anything. But it would have been sin. That's right. Because in this case, he would have if he could have. That's right. I'd like to ask these students, how many, how many of you are virgins? Mm -hmm. Of course, very few are these days. And uh, I even have to define for them what a virgin is. Yeah. <laughs> then I'll ask the boys. And uh, maybe a couple of boys will say, well, I'm a virgin. And I say, well, I have one question for you. Are you a virgin because you don't want any or can't get any? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If it's because they can't get any, there's no virtue That's right. in their behavior. They are sinners at heart. Right. They've lusted in their heart. Verse 13 of chapter 39 of Genesis. Back to the text. And it came to pass, when Potiphar's wife saw that he had left his garment in her hand, and was fled forth, she had her evidence, yep. or what would appear to be evidence against Joseph. She had his cloak, his coat, his garment. Then she called unto the men of her house <laughs> and spake unto them, saying, See, he hath brought in my husband, Potiphar's wife, hath brought in a Hebrew unto us to mock us. She evidently was in uh, conspiracy with these other men in the house, right. probably having sex with some of them. Yep. Yep. He came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried out with a loud voice. Where have we heard that lately? Yep. <laughs> Crying out with a loud voice. And he left his garment with me, and fled. Well, the very fact that he ran away, he must be guilty. He was trying to hide something. He ran away. He left his coat. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. Interesting, it doesn't say her Lord came home, but right. his Lord came home. Yep. You know, Sarah was blessed because she referred to her husband as Lord. Right. Uh, Potiphar's wife may have occasionally voiced those words, but I obviously did not consider him Lord from her heart. Yeah. And she spake unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant, which thou brought on us, putting the blame on yeah. Potiphar, yeah. Uh, uh, on her husband, you brought this Hebrew into our house, this heathen into our house, this idolater into our house. And you brought him in, and he, he's been mocking me. And it came to pass, as I lifted up my voice, probably saying this in a very nice, soft voice, speaking almost like an innocent child, and probably had some... <laughs> Shedding some tears and tearing up and, yeah. and really, really crying. And, <laughs> and, and, and all the men upon the oh, yes, yes, we sympathize with your faithful wife. <laughs> she left it up, or I lifted up my voice and cried. Then he left the garment with me and fled out. And it came to pass when his master heard these words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me that his wrath was kindled. You think he was angry at Joseph? Mm -hmm. I think he was angry at his wife. That's right, amen. Probably angry at all these men. I think he knew what he had. That's right, amen. He did. He knew what he had for a wife, a bad wife. An unfaithful wife, a lusty wife, and he knew he had a faithful servant. Yes. But at the same time, I guess you might say he wasn't man enough to really take a stand. Right. And, uh, you know, to save face, yep. he, he uh, had, had uh, Joseph put into prison. 
And Joseph's master took him and put him into prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. The Lord was with Joseph as a slave. The Lord was with Joseph when the brothers threw him in the pit. And the Lord was with him now as he was going to go to prison as a young man. We're not talking about Bill Cosby at 81 years old going to jail. We're talking about a, a, a 19, 20-year-old kid going to jail. We don't know for how long. Probably wrong to call him a kid because he's a mature young man. Yep. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the key of the prison. And the key of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Amen. Amen. Anything Joseph would do, wherever he was, the Lord would make it to prosper on his behalf. And really, he wasn't seeking the prosperity so much of himself, again, when he worked for Potiphar, but of his master. That's right. Now, what can we say about Potiphar's wife? Well, of course, she violated one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Exodus 23. Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Amen. Verse 2 of Exodus 23, Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. And thou shalt take no gift, no bribe, for the bribe or gift blindeth the wise and perverted the word of the righteous. Psalm 35 verse 20, for they do not speak peace, but against those who are quiet in the land, they devise words of deceit. There are people right now, if you're a Christian, taking a definite stand for Jesus, conspiring against you. Yeah. Amen. Conspiring to bring you down. And the more love you show, the more you're going to be hated and despised and rejected of men. We're often told on campus, these Christians are, oh, Brother Chad, if you just show more love, <laughs> these students would respect you. Yes. They wouldn't behave this way. They would not be cussing you out and, and, and throwing things at you and threatening you if you just be more loving. No, the more real love you show, the more you're going to be resented. Right. The more you're going to be despised, the more you're going to be hated, <coughs> the more men will conspire against you. I mean, Joseph made everybody look bad. He was such a good person, yeah. such a righteous yeah. man, yeah. such a holy man, such a dedicated working man. But he made everyone else look bad. Deuteronomy 19, verse 18, the judges shall inquire diligently. And if the witness is a false witness and has accused his brother falsely, then you shall do to him as he meant to do to his brother. <laughs> we need to implement that today. That's right. Amen. Amen. I'll stop a lot of these false charges right. or charges for which people really have no evidence, just appealing to people's emotions. That's how you'll purge the evil from your midst. And we need to apply God's law and purge the evil from our midst, from our government. Amen. Verse 21 says, and this should be carried out without pity, without compassion. Mm -hmm. So, oh, you're a survivor. Yeah. <laughs> Mrs. Potiphar, you're a survivor. 
Oh, oh, Mrs. Potiphar, you're so courageous yeah. that you would come forward. Now, this man who's so honored, uh, 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 this honorable man who claimed to be an honorable man, Joseph, that you would come forward with this confession of what he tried to do to you. You're a survivor. The Bible says you should not so pity for life. She'll go for life. Mm -hmm. Eye for an eye. A tooth for a tooth. Mm -hmm. Foot for foot. Mm -hmm. Etc. It's a very serious thing mm -hmm. to make a false accusation. That's right. That's right. Because as Judge Kaya says, there'll always be people who will believe these lies. Yeah. Always be those who, who, who will say, uh, uh, well, I wonder if he really did it. And, you know, by the best of us, we'll wonder that from time to time. You know, you're going to have doubts. So we need to be very careful. So how are we to respond when we're falsely accused? Well, Jesus said, Blessed are ye when others revile you and persecute you and other all kinds of evil against you right. falsely on my account. Right, right, right. That's the key. Make sure your critics are criticizing you and falsely accusing you uh, because of Jesus. Right, that's right, amen. Because of your witness and testimony, not because of your own weaknesses and sins or faults. Rejoice. That's the idea. We have to be rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For so persecuted the prophets which are before us. When our when, this tests our character. It, it, it will test what's really made us. It just will influence us to trust in Jesus all the more, to lean and be all the more dependent upon him. And our primary concern is that God is pleased with us, Amen. not whether men are or not. Jesus himself faced false accusations of Pharisees and their followers. Isaiah prophesied this when he said of the Messiah, he was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened up not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened up not his mouth. Pilate. The Roman governor who oversaw Jesus' sentence knew that Jesus had done nothing wrong. That's right. But he pandered to the Jews yeah. and followed the false accusations uh, to, uh, and allowed the false accusations to stand when he should have exposed and said, This is a bunch of malarkey, a bunch of baloney you're bringing up here. That's right. Thankfully, someone like, you know, I, I, I've concluded this Lindsey Graham, this a little Donald Trump stuff has been rubbing off on that guy. Mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And we all need a little bit of Donald Trump stuff rubbing off on us, in my opinion. Okay. You know. Amen. Amen. So when we're accused... We need to first of all examine ourselves to make sure, That's right. you know, we're not rightfully being accused. And then we need to consider where the criticism is coming from. There are people who are regular and reasonable, or should be, in your life. And then there are those who are not. So we want to, you know, listen to the people that are, you know, parents, uh, spouses, uh, pastors, you know, who want to speak something into our life, we should, you know, not immediately discount what they have to say if it's critical. We want to take into consideration. But, uh, you know, I have these strangers coming up, people who've never preached before, uh, every day telling me how I should be preaching. Yeah. Now, if I have some seasoned preacher come up and make some suggestion to me, that's an entirely different story than someone I'm in a relationship with or someone on my board, or some such thing as that. Uh, 
Um, let's go do. Got much more here in my notes than I can cover. Um, Bible says in Romans twelve nineteen, dearly beloved. Avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Um, mm. That's good. Now, so often the counsel in the New Testament is to not defend yourself. And that's what Jesus did when he was falsely accused. Uh, typically, he did not defend himself. Now, one of the high moments of the hearings on Thursday was uh, when Judge Kay talked about his 10-year-old daughter. Yep. And uh, they were going to pray, and she said, well, can we pray for the woman? Let's pray for the woman. And so I thought, well, that's good. I'll make a post on this. Let's pray for the woman. But I found an imprecatory prayer Amen. in the Psalms to pray for the woman. And well, explain imprecatory. Prayer. Yeah. Well, it's pronouncing a curse right. upon people. Uh, and we're going to go to that in Psalm one on uh, Psalm one hundred nine. And by the way, because I I got put in Facebook jail for three days for just. <laughs> Putting a Bible verse with these imprecatory prayers, we find numerous of them uh, in Psalms. And I've been on Facebook for a, a decade, and this is the only time I've been put on Facebook jail. First time one day. Uh, this is a, a three-day uh, sentence. Yeah. Uh, Psalm 109. Hold not thy peace, O God of my praise, for the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are opened against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. Amen. They have compassed me about with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. Mm -hmm. For my love, they are my adversaries. But I give myself to prayer. So again, the more love you show, the more adversaries and opponents and enemies you're going to have. They have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. Now, this is where his prayer gets imprecatory. Mm -hmm. Set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned, and let his prayer become sin. Mm -hmm. Let his days be few. And let another take his office. We find that quoted in uh, yes. Acts yes. Uh, 1, you know, right. they were, when they replace uh, Judas by casting lots as one of the twelve apostles. Let his children be fatherless, mm -hmm. and his wife a widow. Let his children be continually vagabonds and beg. Let them seek their bread also out of their own desolate places. Let the extortioner catch all that he hath, and let the st stranger spoil his labor. Let there be none to extend mercy unto him. Neither let there any favor be to his, neither let there be any favor favor his fatherless children. Let his posterity be cut off. Verse 14, let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered with the Lord and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Mm -hmm. Now that's an imprecatory prayer. That's really pronouncing a curse. This is David. This is the one described in the New Testament as a man after God's own heart. Right. So there is a time to pray these imprecatory prayers. You can go ahead. We don't have time to go through that whole psalm. Remember, though, even Jesus said at the Last Supper, Woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Yep. Who was that? Judas. Jesus. He said, Woe unto him. Uh, 
Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Jesus pronounced curses upon these religious leaders. He goes on to say in Matthew 26, verse 24, at the Last Supper, it were better for the man that he had been not born. Paul prayed, um, I would that they were even cut off, which trouble you. Galatians 5, 12. If you read that in other uh, translations, it's more specific. Mm -hmm. You know, the issue was circumcision. And so when he read, I prayed, just totally cut them off, you know, cut off their private part. That's, that's, that's strong language. As for those agitators, I would say would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. Yeah. There's another translation. Um, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 16, 22, If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, Indeed. let him be accursed. Or an anathema. Even so come, Lord Jesus. Or, or uh, Maranatha. So these imprecatory prayers, a lot of people say, well, that's Old Testament. But we see them in the New Testament Amen. as well. Uh -huh. I could give many other examples. I don't have the time this morning. So when are we to be silent? Or when are we to pray, you know, bless those that curse us, do good to those who hate us, Jesus also said. Pray for them that spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be called the children of your Father in heaven. What's the balance here? Mm -hmm. When is it or is it ever appropriate to pray these imprecatory prayers uh, praying curses upon people. Well, we need to be cautious when using the imprecatory prayers. I'll grant you that. And these are some cautions I've listed. Avoid personal revenge mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or vindictiveness. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. We're not concerned so much about our own reputation. We're concerned about the reputation yeah. of, of the church reputation of God. Yeah. That's our primary concern. You know, the judge has to be concerned about the reputation of the court. So it's not for personal reasons that we're primarily motivated to do that because we've been insulted or someone has put us down. So we have no authority to read back into David's imprecatory words or Jesus or Paul's any personal spite or cruelty. So don't we, we don't pray these prayers because we're cruel. They just become necessary. These people need to be quieted or they'll they'll ruin our country. Yes, amen. They'll amen. they'll destroy the church of God on earth. Right. They'll destroy the reputation of good men. So uh, we need to check our motive. Two, our primary concerns must be the honor of God and public justice. Amen. Good men desire the punishment of wrong. If we show sympathy towards those who in the wisdom of God are allowed to fully become that which they have chosen to be, enemies of God, then we would be sharing in their sin and godlessness. You know, the Bible talks about God hardening Pharaoh's heart, but it also talks about Pharaoh hardening his own heart. Yes. I believe by the time God is doing things to harden his heart, Pharaoh is virtually beyond redemption. He's settled in his heart. He's determined whatever to fight against God. Right. And so we need to have discernment when praying in peccatory prayers. I, Probably wouldn't advise a you know your ten year old daughter to engage in the uh, imprecatory prayers. <laughs> uh, it takes a mature man of God uh, to know when to use such prayers and when not. Three, such prayers of uh, imprecations probably should only be done after prayers for mercy and in the context of fasting. That's right. Have you made every reasonable human effort on behalf of your own enemy? Mm -hmm. You know, what have you done? Have you gone to him? Have you talked to him if possible? Sometimes you can't talk to these people. But sometimes these matters can be settled privately. You know, again, the whole Republican argument 
why didn't you bring this? We, we could have settled all this privately. We didn't need this public fiasco. We didn't need these circus. That, that was the argument of the Republicans in the recent hearings. So do it, let's do it privately. Maybe we can get this settled. No. Four. These prayers are offered by zealous, the holy, and those who are engaged in warfare. Not by the lukewarm Christians, or by sinners for that matter. Amen. you got Amen. sin in your life, you're, you're hardly qualified to pray down curses on other sinners. <laughs> only the righteous, only the pure in heart can pray such prayers, or should be praying such prayers. Remember, these prayers came from the mouth of David, Jesus, Paul. Make sure secret sins or, or personal revenge are not hiding under a cloak of zeal for the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, I remember the Jimmy Swaggart scandal just before you know, his hypocrisy was exposed. He seemed to be preaching stronger than ever. And I remember him pointing on getting on TV and pointing his his finger in the face. Mr. Supreme Court Justice. You know, but it wasn't coming from a pure heart. So he was disqualified. Curses pronounced for the wrong motive, and the wrong motive would be malice or ill will, might be turned back on your own That's head. Right. That's right. On the hypocrite's head. You know, that's what happened to Haman in the book of Esther. He ended up being hung on his own noose that he had prepared for Malachi. That's right. Mordecai. Yeah, Mordecai. And finally, these are the cautions when praying in precatory prayers. Do not be promiscuous in either blessing or cursing others. Amen. You know, we might just go up to anybody and say, God bless you, yeah. and we use it kind of without thinking, and, and it's almost just kind of a social greeting in many cases. So we don't want to be promiscuous and pronounced. The Bible says lay hands quickly on no man. Yeah. Be, but be swift to hear, slow. slow to speak, and Amen. slow to wrath. Amen. So we ought to be slow and this isn't our first reaction to start praying in precatory prayers. Mm -hmm. That's, you might say, the last resort. Yeah. Amen. So is Joseph full game temptation? We can overcome temptation. Amen. That's right. And as Joseph overcame false witnesses, false testimony against him and end up ruling Egypt being second in control of all of Egypt God has great plans for Amen. us Amen. as we listen to his voice as we keep his commandments as we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ Amen, Amen. let's turn to uh, page 164 and uh, Brother Dave if you'll come up and help lead in this uh, M, uh, 164. I must tell Jesus yes. all of my trials. And Joseph went through a lot of trials. Yes, he did. I cannot bear these burdens alone. Hallelujah. Brother Amen. Dave. I must I tell, tell Jesus, Jesus all of my trials. trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, He kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for His own. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. <clears throat> I must tell Jesus all of my troubles. He is a kind, compassionate friend. 
If I but ask him, he will deliver. Make up my troubles quickly and then. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Tempted and tried, I need a great Savior, one who can help my burdens to bear. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, He all my cares and sorrows will share. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Oh, how the world to evil allures me. Oh, how my heart is tempted to sin. I must tell Jesus, and he will help me. Over the world, the victory to win. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Well, Brother Jed, thank you so much. It's a very great word of God to our hearts this morning. Now go out and do it. Amen. Amen? You are dismissed.